Hello, Cedar Lee here, and today I'm going to show you how I build my shipping crates for large-scale paintings. For anything, uh, any painting under about 30 inches, uh, maybe even a little bigger than that, you can get away with building a box out of cardboard. That will be enough to keep it safe. But for anything really large scale, you're going to want to build a wooden crate to protect, especially if it's on canvas, to protect that large canvas from damage. So I have this painting. It's 40 by 50 inches, really big, and I have to ship it to another state to its new owner. So I'm going to build a crate. Now, the first thing you use to protect your painting, to prepare it for shipment, is this foam pipe insulation to protect the edges. So these will fit around most paintings as long as they're not deeper than about one and a half inches on the edges. And you can find them in the plumbing section of a hardware store like Home Depot. They usually come in like six to eight foot lengths um, and they have a slit all the way down. Now they also make uh, a kind that has like sticky tape down the center. Don't get that kind. Make sure you get the kind that's just a slit. So you're going to cut the foam pipe insulation to fit all around the edges of your painting. And if you've got the right size tubes, um, they come in different sizes. For this painting I use the three quarter inch ones. Then it should fit nice and snug onto the edges of your painting and protect it all around without actually squeezing it too hard. So uh, just a little note, do not put these foam tubes on an oil painting that is still tacky. Uh, make sure your painting is completely dry before you use this method. So I cut the pieces slightly longer than the sides of the painting so it goes all around the corners. You don't want the corners of your paintings to stick out past the tubes. And now the painting's edges will be protected all around the front and the back of the painting. Okay, so our goal is to build a wooden crate to fit the dimensions of the painting exactly after it's got its foam padding around the edges. So you're going to want to measure how much space that the foam tube adds on either side of the painting and make sure you factor that in. The foam insulation adds about half an inch on either side of the painting as well as half an inch to the front and the back of the painting. So, but you're going to want to measure um, every time just to make sure that you're building the box to the right dimensions. So for this painting that is 40 inches by 50 inches by one and a half inches deep, the interior of my box is actually going to be, after you've added the foam insulation, about 41 inches by 51 inches by two and a half inches. So I'm going to use 1x3s for the outside edges of my box because a 1x3 is just slightly bigger than 2.5 inches, so that should be the perfect size. If you've got a deeper painting, um, like the edges of your stretchers are deeper, um, you might want to go with 1x4s. Now you do not have to buy furniture grade lumber for this. I'd always go for just the cheapest 1x3 boards that I can get. So when you're deciding how long to cut your boards, keep in mind that if you're using 1x3s, the thickness of the wood itself adds to the dimensions of your box. It will add about 3 quarter inches, 3 quarters of an inch to each side of your box because that's the width of a 1x3. So accounting for both the foam insulation and the thickness of your wood. The exterior dimensions of the crate are going to be like an extra half an inch for the foam tube plus an extra three quarters inch for, the, for your wood on every side. So the, the final measurement for my box is going to be 42.5 inches by 52.5 inches um, for the exterior of the box. So those are the measurements that I'm using to decide how long I cut these pieces of wood. Now for the front and back face of your box, you can use thin plywood or you can use masonite hardboard. Both are fine. Um, I just usually go to the store and see what's there that would work. 
get something that's decent quality but not too heavy because you want to keep the weight down. So you get a big flat piece of hardboard or plywood and you cut that to the dimensions of your box. You can use a table saw if you've got one or a circular saw if you've got sawhorses set up. Now before you start assembling all these pieces, Just double check, hold up the pieces of wood to your painting to make sure you cut everything to exactly the right sizes. Then you are ready to assemble. So when you're lining up the corners of your 1x3s, it's helpful to use a miter clamp, um, which is just a 90 degree clamp. It holds the, the two pieces of wood at an, a right angle to each other to make sure you're perfectly square. When you're lining these up for the first time, just be careful to align them correctly with the short side and the long side overlapping whichever way you ended up measuring. Depending on how you cut your wood, it could be either way, but you want to make sure you get this detail right. I usually assemble this rectangle first and just putting one screw into each corner to sort of hold it together. And then once you've got your rectangle, just double check one last time that your painting fits in there nicely and then you can start putting on the uh, the faces of your box. Now before I screw it together a nice little detail is to use a marker to mark where you're going to put your screws just so that they will be spaced evenly and it'll look nice and be sturdy with the screws evenly placed. You're going to want to put two screws on each corner like a couple inches in from the corner and then just space them evenly down the edges. And then a nice little touch that you can add is to get a countersink bit that is the same size as the heads of the screws you'll be using and then drill the countersink onto your little marks that you've made to uh, make a little hole where each screw is going to go and this will make make it so when you put your screws in they will line up perfectly with the wood and look really nice. And then for when you're putting the screws in um, you're going to need a shorter screw. I use three quarter inch screws for this part and you just go down the holes that you've drilled, the pilot holes with the countersink and you put your screws in and uh, when you're doing the edges you Sometimes these boards might be warped or bowed a little bit and just make sure to pull the wood so that it's perfectly lined up with the edge of your flat piece of plywood. When you screw it all together it'll it'll pull everything straight. So after you've gotten the uh, rectangle put together of the outer edges of your box and then one of the faces of your box put on, now it's time to put your painting inside the box make sure that it fits in there nicely and you can see that it is a perfect fit and the foam tubes around the edges um, will be touching the top face of the box but not squeezing the painting too much so it'll be in there nice and snug and then at this point as I put the the lid on the box the top of the box I Make sure to remember and take a little moment to say goodbye to your painting before you seal it up. And then you just repeat that process for the other side um, with the countersink holes and the screws. Put it all together and then you've got a really nice, sturdy, impenetrable crate. No matter what the FedEx guy does, if he stomps on it, it's going to be safe in there. Besides making sure that this is going to protect your artwork and transit to its new home. Uh, when it arrives there, whoever's opening the box is going to be impressed with the quality of your packing and how you've clearly taken care to make sure that the painting is safe. It's good customer service as well as good common sense. So of course you'll always want to measure, your, get your own measurements for the specific artwork that you're shipping but um, hopefully you get the basic concept of this and uh, now you can build your own.